Pastor Karen, I am glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. A couple of announcements. The first one is please take out your I Worship Today sheet and let us know that you are here. This will go into our offering plates later in our worship service. Hang on to that sheet, though, because our first announcement is about the church picnic, which will be happening next week right after this service. We would love for you to let us know that you are sticking around for that meal um, as the church is providing hamburgers, hot dogs, brats, all kinds of meat goodies. Um, and But we are asking that you sign up and bring a side, a dessert, um, what else do I have on the fruit salad? Um, but it's helpful for us to know how many uh, people are planning on coming uh, just so that we have good numbers uh, for the meal pieces that we are providing. Also, you'll notice in your uh, worship notes today that we are working on a cookbook. So this church picnic is a great time to bring your favorite like classic you dish and then when others are like, this is amazing, I want the recipe, you can say, it'll be in the cookbook. But you have to remember to submit it to the cookbook, um, which will be a youth fundraiser for our gathering next summer. So combine those two, picnic, favorite dishes, um, cookbook. All right. My next announcement is actually going to be a video. Redemption is always the redemption of creation. And here's the good news. What happens when you flourish is you become more you. You become more that person God had in mind when he first thought you up. God wants you to become a new creation, but new doesn't mean completely different. Instead, it's like an old motorcycle that gets restored to its intended beauty. Alive with God to become the person God made you to be. Pastor Steve's adult Bible study class starts September 3rd on Sundays at 9:30. He will also have a September 7th start for that Thursday 10 a.m. class, and that is the book, The Me I Want to Be. Um, it is how to be the best version um, of who God has created us to be. It should be a great Bible study, but we want to make sure that we have enough books for everyone who wants to attend, so please let us know if you need a book on the I Worship Today sheet um, so that we can get those in before that class starts. Oh, awesome. Excellent. Um, for our children and youth, um, we will start our Sunday school classes on September 11th at 9.30. The youth will be in the youth room. Um, our children will be downstairs in our godly playroom. So just take note of the date. Adults on the 3rd and continuing and kids starting on the 10th. The next announcement is about another fun event coming up. It is a game night. Uh, the youth board is hosting a game night for the congregation. Um, we will have games there um, to play, but we encourage you to bring any game that you love to come um, and join in the fellowship and the fun of the evening and to bring any snacks that you would love to bring um, and share as well. I believe that a flock note went out this week to sign up. Next week it will be on the I Worship Today sheet as well. 
Also, um, again, told you not to put away your eye worship today sheet. Uh, Popcorn Festival is just around the corner, and we are starting to gather our volunteers for that. You can sign up on the I Worship Today sheet, or if you really want to pick your time um, of when you want to volunteer, they do have time schedules up by the Welcome Center that you can sign up there for a specific spot. If you sign up here, you know, you get what you get um, after everyone else there has signed up. So make sure you check that out. A couple pieces of people news um, that are exciting today. Uh, Kimberly Sands gave birth to a baby boy. His name is Kai. Both mom and baby are healthy. And so we rejoice with them, grandparents, great-grandparents, all a part of our congregation. And so we rejoice with them. Also, Sue and Bob Lupini are uh, great-grandparents again um, with the birth of Cooper Douglas. And so we rejoice with them as well. Um, on a sadder note, um, Martha Flynn, um, who has been in hospice, entered into the church triumphant this morning. Um, there are no plans yet. Um, we will let you know when those have been arranged. I believe, uh, please keep that family, Pat um, and his whole family, in your prayers during this time of grief. I believe those are all of my announcements, so let us stand as we continue with our worship. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace with one another. Peace. Continue with our call to worship based on Psalm 67. God marks us with grace and blessings so that your ways may be known and your salvation seen throughout the world. Show us the grace of God. 
May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule with equity, guidance, and care. The land yields its harvest, and our God blesses us. All in the end. We'll see and honor our Lord. Amen. Let us sing, Change My Heart, O God. Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and continually to do so, that your name may be known throughout the earth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 56, beginning with the first verse. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. As the foreigners who join them to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to keep his servants, all who keep his Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold my hold fast my covenant I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathered the outcasts of Israel. I shall gather others to them besides those who are already gathered. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Romans chapter 11. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people for whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you 
were once disobedient to God and have now received mercy because of their disobedience so that so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated, and I invite our children to come forward. We have one more. Is he coming? All right. We're going to stand up for a minute. All right, my question is, do you guys trust me? <laughs> that was like a maybe yes, except I don't know what I'm trusting you about. And you said yes. All right, so who wants to trust me first? I don't even know what we're doing. Who wants to go first? I know. Who wants to go first, though? Evan? Not you. You want to go first? Yeah. All right. Here, I'm going to have you come sit over here for a second. All right. You and I are going to do a trust fall. <laughs> do you know what a trust fall is? Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to stand here, okay, and I'm going to stand behind you, and we're going to enter into an agreement, which the church calls a covenant, okay? And you're going to say... Are you ready? And I'm going to respond, I'm ready. And you're going to say falling, and I'm going to say fall on. And when I say fall on, you get to trust me. And with a very straight back, you're just going to fall backwards, and I'm going to catch you. Okay? You ready for this? You ready? He's like, I said I trusted you, but I'm not sure about this. All right. So... You get to start. You're going to say, are you ready? Are you ready? Ready. Now you say falling. falling. Wait, hold on. Don't fall yet. And I'm going to say fall on, and now you get to fall. Oh. <laughs> you didn't see the little feet step backwards. We're going to try this again. Okay? All right, so ask me if I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Falling. Fall on. There we go. All right. Big hand for Oscar. All right. Are you ready? All right. Come on over. Remember, we're going to do covenant. You get asked me if I'm ready. I'll say ready, falling, fall on, and then you fall with a straight back. All right? Okay. You ready? Are you ready to start? Are yes. You ready? I'm ready. Falling. Falling. Fall on. Did you see that? 
That was like a full, like, I can still stand. And you can catch me. Okay, straight back, falling, okay, ready? I'm ready. Fall on. There we go. Awesome. All right, now who's ready to catch me? <laughs> you don't have to catch me. But I'm going to tell you, you guys did an amazing job. Give me five. You know what I sometimes see when I ask people to do this? Other than the step back and the whole like, oh. You can, you can catch me because I'm not really falling. The other thing that people do that I have seen is when they start to fall, they get scared and they go like this. And guess where they land? They go straight down right on their crutacus. And here's the thing. Come here. Turn around. If I'm back here, trying to catch you back here, and you go straight down onto your rear end, do I even have a chance to catch you? No. So this is what we're talking about. We can come over and we can sit down. This is what we're talking about, is trusting, not necessarily each other, but trusting God. Because sometimes we don't always trust that God is going to be there to catch us. But today, we see a Canaanite woman who puts all of her trust in God. And you know what? God says that he'll be here to catch us no matter what. So let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you're right beside us, ready to catch us. Help us to be brave and trust in you all of the time. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks guys for coming up. So we are doing trust falls today. It is not without purpose. You see, we often talk about faith. And today is one of those days when we are talking about faith. But the reality is faith is this abstract concept that's really hard to see and understand. In fact, it's so hard that in seminary, one of the professors, whenever we were reading scripture, we would come across the Greek word pistos, which is correctly translated as faith. And he would say, it would be more understandable if we translated pistos, faith, as trust. Because that is what faith is. It is trusting in God. Today, we see this Canaanite woman. And Jesus says to her, great is your faith. And she becomes for us an example of one who trusts God. Now, this story today, this Canaanite woman, she comes to Jesus and to us at a very hard moment in her life. First of all, she is a woman, which means that in the first century, she had very little to no rights of her own. And today we see that she appears in public alone. She does not have a man with, with her, which whenever you would have gone out, you would have had a man to accompany you, to help you. And she has no one. No one is there to advocate for her or for her daughter. Not only is she a woman, but she is a Canaanite woman, which means that she is a Gentile. She is of a different race and culture to the disciples and Jesus. She is not an Israelite, which means that in their eyes, she is not one of God's chosen people. She is an outsider, someone who you might want to keep at arm's length. Not only is she a woman and a Canaanite, but then there is this whole matter of her daughter. Her daughter, unknown age, is tormented by a demon. 
which means that this daughter could be anywhere from a baby with colic to a full-grown adult with physical or mental disabilities or anywhere in between. And the reality is, regardless of what is actually going on, she has disgraced the family because of whatever un untypical behavior that is going on. And because this would have been a disgrace for the family, the family would have disowned child and mother together. Needless to say, her life is not easy. And just like in our trust falls today, you can kind of have two choices. You can show up and trust, or you can step back, bend at the waist, bend forward and fall on your tuchus. She could have hidden her child away so that she would not bring scorn or shame or ostracism upon her family. Or she could show up and trust the one person who might actually be able to help. And what we see is that today she shows up. She begins to follow Jesus and the disciples, screaming and pleading for mercy for herself and her daughter. And Jesus does his best to ignore her. In fact, the disciples are kind of like irritated with this woman following, around, following them around and screaming at them, and they come to Jesus and say, tell her to go away. And Jesus decides that he is going to talk to his disciples in a way that is going to be overheard by this woman. And he says that he did not come to help her. She is not a part of the plan. She is not a part of the salvation that he is bringing. Now, I'm going to tell you, I can kind of understand all of this. You know, when you have kids, they're following you around and they're like, mom, 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 mom. And you're like, I'm just going to ignore this for a moment because this is not how we behave. And they're just going to, mom, mom, mom. And you're like, I'm already doing something. You have to give me a minute. And I don't know about anyone else's children, but my children are still like, mom, mom, mom. And you're like, I'm trying to help you find the thing that you already asked me to help you with. And I, like, I can't do a second thing for you before I finish the first one. Right? We can understand this. Except Jesus then goes on. And he says something that makes all of us cringe. Makes us all feel super uncomfortable. He calls this woman a dog. Highlighting just how different, just how unacceptable she is, making it clear that she is not worth his time. This Canaanite woman, she could have shrunk away out of fear, shame, or embarrassment. She could have given up and gone home. She could have gotten angry and made an even bigger scene before storming off. She could have lost all hope. She could have stopped trusting that Jesus would help her and her daughter. She could have bent at the waist and fallen down. But she doesn't. She just keeps showing up, shouting and begging for mercy and love. And we can see that she doesn't just show up. She shows up with a heart full of faith, trusting that Jesus is the Son of God, trusting that Jesus as the Son of God can and will help her and her daughter. In faith, she puts all of her trust in God as she calls Jesus Lord, as she falls on her knees in worship, as she surrenders admitting that, yes, she is a dog and not a child. But then she wonders about how the master's children and dog interact, challenges Jesus' perspective, pointing out 
what we all know to be true is that even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And again, she begs for mercy, begging not for food, but simply for crumbs that are enough. And Jesus' narrow perspective, believing that he comes only to the house of Israel, is broken wide open to reveal what God has been saying throughout Scripture. You know, we hear today in Isaiah that the Lord is the one who gathers the outcasts, who gathers others besides the ones who have already been gathered. The one who promises that soon God's salvation will come and that the Lord's deliverance will be revealed and that God's mercy is for all people. Jesus says, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you wish. And her daughter is instantly healed. I wonder what your life looks like when it gets hard. And I wonder what your faith and your story of trust in God looks like when your life gets hard. Because the reality of our lives is that they are often so much harder than the facade that we present to the world. We struggle with illness with loving and caring for our spouses. We struggle with our grief. Not just grief in death, but grief in all of the losses that we have in this life. We struggle with addiction, with family systems of violence. We struggle with balancing budgets and the realities of food and housing insecurities not being able to afford for our families, our spouse, our kids, everything that they want and that they need. We are embarrassed, and we feel shame when we feel judged against unrealistic expectations or when somehow others see our brokenness, allowing us to feel so much more vulnerable in their presence. We might not walk in this Canaanite woman's shoes, but all of us know what it is like when life is hard, when things are spiraling out of control, when we feel like we are being left out, picked upon, or when we are made to feel like outsiders or less than others. And when life gets really hard, I often see people making two choices when it comes to their life of faith and trust in God. One is that they withdraw to themselves, tightening the circle of who they trust, tightening it so much that sometimes they only trust in themselves, which can look a lot like bending at the hips and falling right on our rear ends, and then wondering why it is that nobody that God was not able to catch us. The other is that people keep showing up. They keep showing up and putting their trust in God who has promised to be compassionate and merciful, loving and gracious, and who has promised to always be there to catch you, to make you whole, and to set you back upright. Today in this Canaanite woman, we have a great example of what showing up looks like. It is seeking and following Jesus. It is being truthful about what is going on in our lives and being vulnerable enough to ask for help. It is calling upon and worshiping the Lord. It is surrendering control and allowing God's love and mercy to forgive and heal us and to make us whole. When life gets hard, and it always does, we get to remember that we should show up and not shut down, that we should trust in God for God's love and grace and compassion is mercy. It is all waiting there right next to us to catch us when we fall. 
Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have promised to be with us, that you have promised to be with us when life gets hard, to not only be there, but to hold us, to heal us, to set us back upright, that we can continue in our lives of faith. But Lord, we know how hard trusting is. Two children today said they trust me, and yet even they are hesitant. Pour your spirit out upon us, Lord, that we might be able to fully put our trust in you each and every day. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand as we continue with our confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, whose word never fails and whose promise is sure. Gracious God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God offers boundless grace when we fail. In God's compassion and mercy, know that you are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all in creation. Please be seated. O oh God, your spirit gathers the church. Shepherd those who are newly baptized and newly ordained in the proclamation of the gospel. Breathe life into ecumenical and interreligious endeavors and support missionaries throughout the globe. Lord, in your mercy. You created the earth and all its inhabitants and declared it good. Clean polluted skies, seas, and soil, provide nourishment to plants and animals, and make us aware of our impact on the environment. Lord, in your mercy. You call leaders to bridge differences and practice generosity. Inspire all in authority to protect people in harm's way. Deliver those in bondage, support fair elections, provide care for military personnel and veterans, and show mercy to those for whom they have responsibility. Lord, in your mercy, you provide those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Embrace people who have been rejected because of difference, heal trauma caused by racism or prejudice, Shield any who are persecuted, console the dying, and heal the sick. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh God, you journey with us in all of life's transitions. Guide those preparing for baptism, marriage, and retirement. Guide our church, council, and committees in their visioning and ministry. Safeguard those who travel. 
Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks for those who now rest from their labors. Motivate us by their lives of dedication to the gospel until that day when we join with them in our eternal home. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our church family and those we name aloud or silently in our hearts that all experience the healing and comfort given through Christ. Family, we pray for those who are in California now and the hurricane coming. We pray, Lord, for the island of Maui and those recovering from fire. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. He taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This time I'm going to invite you to gather your offering and your I Worship Today card. In a moment we'll invite you to head out the side aisles into the narthex. We're there. If you so choose, you can take some hand sanitizer and use that. As you come forward, we will have a brown cup in the center. It has grape juice. If you want that one, stop at that station, receive a wafer, dip it into that grape juice. Otherwise, we have wine at the side, and you may come to those spots. Once you've taken communion, we invite you back to your seat for a moment of prayer. You may proceed.
forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you are condemned. I'm alive and well, the Spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you might keep the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gifts of his body and blood, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let us sing. <laughs>